Welcome back to AB 474 as we continue through the subsections of psychrometric processes. This subsection is going to be on heating with humidification and the subsections following this one will cover adiabatic mixing and evaporative cooling. We looked so far at sensible heating, sensible cooling, cooling with dehumidification, and now we're going to go the opposite way and we're going to look at heating and humidification. Okay, um, and before we do too much with this, I want to introduce a new term, and it is called sensible heat factor. We're going to talk about this uh, inside of uh, heating and humidifying. So, sensible heat factor is um, the uh, relationship between your sensible and your latent and your total energy. So um, the ratio between sensible and the sum of your sensible and latent, um, which is the same as the sum, the, the total energy. So QT is for total. Um, so that's going to be important in just a few minutes. Um, well, it'll be important when you work a problem with it, but it, you will need to understand it a little bit in just a few minutes when we, um, well, how about now when we talk about uh, a little piece of the psychrometric chart that you may or may not have ever paid attention to before. Okay, so um, whenever we're doing heating and humidification, um, we're starting with some point and we're adding some amount of uh, sensible energy, so we have some piece of, of sensible heating, and then we have some end point we want to get to. Sometimes it may be we know what that end point is going we want it to be and sometimes it may be let's see where we end up when we add uh, uh, for the most part when we do humidification we're adding steam and so steam uh, is some combination of sensible and latent because you're adding moisture to the air but that um, uh, the steam is uh, has enough heat, enough thermal energy as a part of it, that it also adds a sensible component. Okay, so, so you're adding s sensible heating and then adding steam, uh, which has a, both a sensible and a latent component to it uh, in order to get to your final state point. So how do we know what the slope of this line should be? And one of the ways that we know that is this part of the chart um, that shows sensible heating factor. Um, so if you know the property of the steam that you're using or if you're given uh, enough information you can identify what's this sensible heating factor and it's the relationship between the sensible and the total or the sensible and the latent so here. So there's some amount that's sensible and then there's some amount that's uh, latent and so this relationship helps you to figure out that sensible heating factor. Okay. Um, now what does that look like in terms of a sketch or a schematic uh, and you know, from a practical standpoint how do you achieve uh, uh, sensible heating with humidification? So usually it is two separate pieces of equipment so you have uh, some sort of a heating unit. So, you know, we're representing it by resistance here. There's other ways to provide heat that is um, sensible heat, but in this case, we're just representing it with a a, uh, a resistance heating element. Uh, so, you add some sensible heat, and then you add moisture directly to the air uh, with some sort of a humidifier. Um, it could be steam, or there's other ways to add mist into the air. In most cases, you're going to be adding steam. And as we've kind of seen before, you have properties of the air coming in, some amount of air coming in, some amount going out, and the properties of the air coming out. Um, as we've seen before, we have some balance equations that we need to uh, s manipulate to understand um, the amount of energy required and uh, the manipulation of the energy 
the combination of it in the different forms of air and moisture. Okay, so there's our balance, um, energy balance, and mass balance. Okay, and if we want to um, <coughs> uh, combine these, we can look at the change in our energy divided by the change in our moisture. Uh, it's equivalent to our um, energy divided by mass of air times the change in our humidity ratios plus the enthalpy of the water. Or we can write this a different way. The change in enthalpy divided by the change in moisture is equal to I'm sorry. This equation expand it out a little bit. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to write that equation. Um, and let's work it with an example. So this is an example from your text as well. Um, three, six in your textbook. So given a state point one. Where we want to start with um, uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit and relative humidity of 20%, we want to reach 115 degrees Fahrenheit and a relative humidity of 30%. So we're given our first state point and our second state point. We're told that we're going to um, humidify using steam. Two hundred and twelve degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, we are going to have a flow rate of sixteen hundred cfm on our supply or on our um, inlet air. Okay. We're asked to find Find the energy required, and this is referring to uh, the sensible part of the process. I'm not sure that the book's description of this is clear on that part. Um, so find the energy required for the sensible part of the process, and also the mass of water vapor. <coughs> that we need to change the states as required. Okay, so let's see. I have a really bad sketch of my notes that I'll try to reconstruct for you for a minute, in a minute. But first, let's take a look at this on the psychrometric chart. Okay, so we have our initial state point at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 20% relative humidity. We are sensibly heating up until some unknown point that I called X1. And then we're going to use steam, so we need the sensible heat factor. And the sensible heat factor for uh, steam is 
uh, around 0.09. I would like for you to go look it up yourself to, to convince yourself of this, but um, sensible heating factor around 0.09, so just slightly shy of the 0.1 mark. And um, then we're going to just use the equivalent slope to start at this unknown point and make our way up to um, our final state point. Really what we do is we mark the final state point and we make the mark down until it hits our uh, sensible heating line and that's that unknown state point. Um, we'll need this in a few minutes. If you draw in the sensible and latent portions, you also have another unknown state point. I just call them X1 and X2. Um, Depending on what types of questions you're asked, you might need either of these unknown state points. For this problem, I think we only need um, state point one, but um, I could potentially ask you questions where you would need both of those. So for example, if I asked you the amount of latent energy, you can get that from um, uh, your point one and you would need your point two, right? Um, if I asked you for the to break the um, uh, portion of uh, steam down into latent and sensible, you would need both of those state points. Um, and if I just asked you for the amount of sensible, you only need the state point and your original starting state point. So depending on what type of um, uh, question I ask you or what type of question you need to answer, you might need any of those four points marked on here. Okay, so as we start to solve this problem, I said I would uh, entertain you with a really bad sketch and I'm going to do my best. Uh, again, these are the kind of things I want to see in your solutions in your homework, uh, as well as on quizzes or exams. So I want to see a sketch. It doesn't have to be beautiful, I just need to be able to kind of follow and see that you understand the process that we're working with. Okay, so we're starting at a state point one. We are moving horizontally, doing some sensible heating. We want to end up at a state point two. We know we're going to do, use some steam to get to that point. So we have a, a diagonal line for that. Because we're using steam, some part of that is made up with sensible, some parts made up with latent. And that gives us these two um, unknown state points that we may or may not need information from. What we're interested in is our T1 and our T2. And depending, like I said, on what I, I ask you for, so there's W2. So our humidity ratios. Depending on what I ask you for, you might need various things of this uh, X1 and X2 as well. All right. Uh, so for example, you might need the enthalpies at any of those points. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and kind of mark down some of the ones I know we need. We know we need the enthalpy at state point one. I know we need humidity ratio at state point one. And that's in pounds of moisture per pound of dry air. I know we're going to need our enthalpy at um, the unknown point x1 and just from the psychometric chart we can read that off. I know we're going to need our humidity ratio at the final point. As you're working through, I also want you to try to keep units and try to stay as organized as possible so I can follow your work and so you can follow your work. OK, 
Okay. Um, let's see. I think with that we should have all the information we need to do our um, calculations to solve this problem. We're told that we have 1,600 cubic feet per minute. So if we solve, we um, have a uh, oops, it on there. Yeah, it's a dry air. All right, our mass flow rate of our air is seven thousand three hundred pounds of dry air, and I apologize for my error there. Pounds of dry air per hour. Um, and then if we want to look at uh, the amount of water, this is where I got ahead on my units. <laughs> And it's related by the amount of air we're moving and the change in um, moisture content of that air. So this is the amount of vapor that we're going to need to supply. So the amount of vapor that we need works out to be 125.6 pounds of water per hour. It's a lot of moisture. Okay, um, and then if we need to know how much energy we need in order to um, complete this process, and actually what we were asked for is just the amount of sensible. Um, So we're going to need to look at so this is just the sensible portion. Let's see up here, I have my units messed up. So this should be pounds of dry air, pounds of dry air. There we go. All right, so 29.2 BTUs per pounds of dry air, minus 16. BTUs per hour. And that gives us our solution for the things we're asked for. Now, if I had asked you to give me the total amount of energy, then you would have <clears throat> needed to look at the state point here. And if I'd asked you to break it down, there's a number of other ways I could ask you to break it down. So just pay attention to what you're being asked for um, in the problem and make sure that you're pulling the state points from the correct place.